Tennessee Wildcast is live on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. We're glad you're tuning in. I'm Jason Harmon, and right next to me is Mr. Don King. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. Uh, glad you're here with me, Don. Thanks for co-hosting today, and we're pretty excited about today's show. But i got to make one quick announcement before we get started. Today is my wife's birthday. Oh, man. So. I'm glad you didn't let that slip. <laughs> uh, happy birthday to my wife, Amy. And then uh, over the weekend, I ran into my brother-in-law, Donnie, and uh, I thought, he said, won't you ever give me a shout-out? So, shout-out to Donnie Standards. <laughs> Indicator, Tennessee. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, thank y'all for watching and uh, uh, excited about what we're going to talk about today. We got Mr. David Roddy with us. He's going to be talking about uh, nuisance fish, uh, don't dump your bait, and all that kind of stuff. And he was recently named Fisheries Biologist of the Year. I know we got some big congratulating to do to him. Yeah. Today. So, and uh, he's brought some pretty cool props to show today. And also we have John McEwen and Walker Hoy. Uh, they're with the McEwen Group, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, their company and what they do, and they're a new TWRA Pro Shop partner. Brand new. Brand new. Welcome, guys. So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, first of all, we're, we're excited to be here. We appreciate you guys having us and appreciate the work you do. Uh, and I'm, I'm John McEwen, and this is Walker Hoy. And we're here today to talk a little bit about our company and some exciting properties we have coming up. Awesome. Well, we're going to um, show a uh, quick video, and I'm going to back out here. Just give me one second. Uh, this is a piece of property on uh, that the McEwen Group has for sale, and uh, it's a really awesome place, and we're going to show that to the folks at home. So stay with us right here. It does have audio, so, uh, oh, man, makes you want to be there. Don't fall asleep. You know, what makes this farm special? And I'll tell you what it is, it's the abundance of fresh water. We measure the value of water by having a place all to ourselves, by being with our favorite people. And how cool it is against your skin on a hot summer day. This is how we value our favorite places. A place that has it all when it comes to water, most notably the pristine frontage on Tumbling Creek and the confluence of the Duck River. And this is Tennessee's Western Highland Rim, and it's been this mother spring, countless valleys and hollows overlooked by these rolling ridge lines, hundreds, maybe thousands of creeks. One of those springs originates not far from the home. And you have this stream and it flows from the mouth of this spring and meandering the length of this quiet valley. For our radio listeners, this is, uh, y this is a must view. You need to go online and check out the video version of this, even though the, the nat sound is so great on there. You know, whether you're searching for a long-term land investment, a property with cold water on it and the thrill of smallmouth bass, rolling farmland or mature hardwood forest uh, to just to pass down to the next generation. Uh, the McEwen group can guide you to make the best decision. And yeah. uh, we're, again, we're just thrilled to have you guys on board as, as uh, pro shop partners. Yeah, it's uh, th th this video is on TWRA TV, so make sure you check that out. Go to TWRA TV and watch that. And uh, it's still rolling in the background if you're watching online or uh, on YouTube or whatnot. But uh, we'd like to welcome John and Walker. Tell us a little bit about, your guy, about you guys and your history. Very good. Thanks again for having us. Uh, the McEwen Group uh, is a family-owned and operated real estate company uh, down in Columbia. Columbia, Tennessee. Columbia, Tennessee, right on the square. Uh, we specialize in the unique landscape of Middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Land, farms, estates, hunting, timber, waterfront properties. We're big water guys. We love the creeks and the streams. So um, anything we can sell on the water, we always enjoy. Um, now, my grandmother started selling real estate in Centerville in the 70s. Then my dad started selling real estate in the 80s. My brother has been doing it for about 15 years, and, and uh, this is my eighth year 
and I think Walker's uh, going on his third year with us. So, All right. so we like to keep it in the family. Yeah, <laughs> runs in the family. That's right. And we've we've got a great team down there who help us do what we do. So I want to uh, certainly give them a shout out also. Cool. But uh, our focus has built been on building long-term relationships with current and future landowners, beginning with the first handshake. You know, mm -hmm. my dad always taught me to give a firm handshake, look them in the eye. So we, we still like to use that handshake to consummate the deal, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and our focus is on the client and his or her specific needs. So I feel like when you put the need of the client above, it, above all, everything else will fall into place. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so we're excited to be here, uh, excited with our partnership with TWRA. And so we're hoping over the next six months uh, to partner with TWRA's media platforms in order to connect our properties with their prospective land stewards of the future of tomorrow. Our plan is to use video technology to help make that connection. And we hope TWRA can help with that. Yeah. And the, the speaking of videos, these the pieces that I've seen so far, you know, this uh, tumbling duck piece especially is just, it, it's super well produced, just basically short films and, uh, you know, the drone shots, being able to really get up there and take a look at the property and what it's all about and uh, view it from above. That's, a, that's always a neat perspective, and I really appreciate the time and effort you guys take to, to showcase these places. Well, I wish we could take credit for these videos, but <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, uh, yeah. we can hardly take pictures with our phones. <laughs> uh, we use a guy named Rusty Cockrell out of Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. We've kind of partnered with him because he's not only is he talented and creative, but he's an ad avid outdoorsman. So, I mean, he gets it. He, can, he gets the same emotion that any of us get when we're fishing or hunting, watching the fog rise coming off the river, wind blowing through wheat and yeah. soybean fields. Um, so he's done a nice job just putting it together and really capturing the emotion that we've been looking for. So uh, I mentioned the drones. There's been a lot of time put into that. I mean, it, how do you get um, – how's he getting these shots? Explain that a little bit. I mean, he's flying over these creeks and, and creating great shots. How do you determine what shots are going to be used in these videos? Well, I guess that's kind of up to his artistic view, yeah. too. Um, we Is that try you to... fishing in the shots? And something? No, unfortunately okay. not. That was another guy. <laughs> but, um, you know, we try to, try to take take them to the best spots on the place, on any farm that we're on to advertise, and let them just kind of work their magic and get different angles. And then he incorporates video and uh, audio, mm -hmm. uh, getting just the reel of the line yeah, I heard that. And, yeah. and the water and putting it all together, and he's done a real nice package. Uh, I think the nicest thing is that he creates a story with it because uh -huh. it's not just a still shot from the air and it's not just a video flyover. It's the whole package that really creates emotion in that story and kind of puts you in the shoes that you're on the farm and in the water and doing the thing. And we just watched that uh, the video here online and, uh, and heard the net sound and uh, mm -hmm. made me want to be there. Tell us a little bit more about this property in particular. Yeah, Tumbling, it's, Tumbling it's, Duck Farm, I it's guess. A, it's a special property. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, 920 Tumbling Creek Road in Hurricane Mills, Tennessee. Uh, it's just an extraordinary property. It has it all. Uh, luxury home, uh, high-volume spring, bass pond, trout pond, uh, right from the spring, frontage on Tumbling Creek, hardwood forest, deep valleys, rolling ridges, gorgeous got about an eight acre sandbar down on the duck river where tumbling creek runs in i mean it it is uh, a magnificent piece of property 604 acres 604 wow. acres yeah i'm showing some pictures of the house while we're while we're talking i know you're talking more about the property there but tell us a little about the house too yeah the house is as impressive as the land itself it's 4400 square feet it's four bedrooms uh, each with a private ensuite uh, got a half bath with an entire wall of smooth sided river stone. Um, it's just uh, the house is is impressive. Huge windows, huge glass overlooking the private valley, the spring, the trout stream that the seller created. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Gorgeous walnut, kind of toasted walnut, white oak flooring, huge screen porch with a wood burning fireplace. I know you guys are really looking for <laughs> special buyers. What's what's your ideal buyer for a property like this or, or other ones that you're representing? Sure. Um, 
the ideal buyer for this, I feel like, would be uh, the majority of our business comes from Nashville, Memphis, uh, executives, uh, people who just enjoy being outside, looking for recreational and weekend retreats. Everybody wants to be about an hour out, which this property is. And uh, um, we also look for an out-of-state buyer. You know, we pull buyers from many other states, lots mm -hmm. of folks coming from uh, – Indiana, Illinois, Florida, California. So we certainly won't discriminate. I like how you guys pay attention to the history and the, the you know, there's there's a lot of love that's gone into these properties and, and the upkeep and the care and the making sure that it's stayed in a natural state up to now, you know, and and I know uh, that's that's an important part of what, what you're looking for in a buyer too. So that, it is. that goes along with our agency's uh, uh, mission, you know, to, to try to, sure. uh, keep, keep great places to, to spend time outdoors. Absolutely. We're, we're conservation minded and, and we're always, uh, trying to pass that on to the next landowner and, and just want them to conserve the habitat, uh, to pass it on to future generations. So yeah. they'll be able to enjoy, uh, our resources the way we have. That's great. Well, John, uh, and, uh, and Walker, I appreciate you all being here today. Um, if you want to watch this entire video, Tumbling Duck Farms, it's on uh, TWRA TV under the McEwen Group Pro Shop channel. Uh, and if uh, if you're a subscriber to TWRA TV, go visit their official um, their or visit their office in downtown Columbia, Tennessee, and grab a twenty five dollar gift card to Ted's Sporting Goods. Oh, there I've been you to go. Ted's. I like that store. That's the upside Absolutely. down, the upside store. down yeah. side. Upside yeah. down Ted's. Uh, you right. can also <laughs> find them on Facebook. Just follow the links and. Uh, uh, in our show feed and we'll put those out there and and visit our the live stream uh, post on our Facebook page and, and see this beautiful property and, and uh, once again we appreciate you guys and good luck on selling thank that you. place thank you for having us thank, thank you. you all right appreciate we're gonna ch change gears here and, and bring on uh, David and uh, we'll be right back Chronic wasting disease affects whitetail deer, mule deer, elk, and moose populations in many states. We are CWD free in Tennessee and are counting on hunters to keep it that way. Remember, if you hunt out of state for big game animals, it's very important that you learn the proper way to bring those harvested animals home. New restrictions are in place for good reason. Learn more at tnwildlife.org. Please help us keep Tennessee CWD free. All right. Well, that was a quick changeover, and we appreciate the McEwen, McEwen Group for being here today. And now we have Mr. David Roddy. Thanks for coming, David. Thanks, guys. Good to be here. Yeah. Um, excited to, to chat with you today. And, um, you know, this is not a – well, some of this is a, is a, a happy topic. Some of this we wish wasn't around. But, uh, uh, number one, the happy side of things is you're the fishery biologist of the year. Did you ever expect that? I did not. It was a huge <laughs> surprise, and it's uh, uh, a thrill to, to receive. So um, tell us how that process goes a little bit. How do they, de how do they determine the fisheries biologist of the year? Well, um, our field staff, um, our fish division staff submit biologists for the year. We also do a technician of the year as well. And um, I believe uh, our chief and assistant chief and, you know, chooses the, uh, the one that's probably done the most work in a given year. And I couldn't have done it without our field staff. We've got great hatchery managers that make my job easier they're receptive to uh all the new technology that i bring them and uh yeah. and we've got reservoir crews that's doing a and s work especially uh, in region three so it's um without their help you know my job be more difficult so um great support in the field i've got a picture here behind us uh and if you're watching on facebook there's a picture there of david and uh uh, assistant chief J jason henniger uh, chief uh, frank fiss and our director ed carter and and uh, Mr. Jeff Cook, uh, chairman of the commission. So um, that was at our last commission meeting yeah. in Knoxville. Presented, and, uh, uh, presented there. So yeah, yeah. Congratulations, David. That's okay. that's awesome. I know th your years of experience at the you know running the hatchery. I mean, uh, run uh, hatchery operation. I mean, that's been your life for for a lot of years, hasn't it? Uh, actually, uh, it goes back to the college days when I was in school in Tampa. Oh, wow. Uh, I had a friend that was uh, working at a tropical fish farm. So when I had time, I'd go down there and, and help <laughs> him and kind of got the passion for aquaculture and actually started on the reservoir crew in Region 2. And then the Springfield Hatchery manager opened, and uh, I was blessed to get that for um, 
23 years there. Wow. So in acquiring that knowledge, I'm able to pass it on. We've got sure. new hatchery managers coming on. And, you know, they they're, uh, look like they uh, deer in the headlights. And <laughs> I'm able to say, it's okay. This, uh, this technique will work. You just got to let it work. So. Right, right. Well, the, the thing about being a hatchery manager is you really, I mean, it's such a commitment. You can, you, you have to, you can't just go away for the weekend and take no. the wife off somewhere, no. you know, without uh, making a lot of arrangements ahead of time. You, you, it's, it's really a 24-7 deal, isn't it? It is, especially with the trout, because that's year-long. Right. Um, the warm water has about three or four months off, and with the, the warm water hatcheries, uh, you can be out at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning cleaning, cleaning the screen. And if my wife was here, she'd say uh, he does it 24 hours a day. <laughs> and I've actually gotten her and my two daughters growing up, t- you know, to help on the oh, weekend. Yeah. So it's, it's a family affair, and uh, it, it's a passion. You have to have that passion as a hatchery manager because it is uh, a lot of hours and a lot of work. And pretty much uh, living on site, too, mm-hmm. right? I mean, at the Springfield Hatchery, you— you were there minding the store mm-hmm. uh, on on site, um, and people like to visit on the weekends. <laughs> so it's yeah, you think you're done, especially in the winter, you know, on Friday. But you know, here here comes people on the weekends. Yeah. So, so uh, real quick, you may have mentioned this already, but now you've you've done all this work in, in our, inside our agency. But now, we're, what's your what's your role, your main title now? Uh, pretty much seventy five percent of my time is the statewide hatchery coordinator, okay. overseeing for. Uh, cold water and seven warm water hatcheries and then the remaining 25 percent which is becoming even more <laughs> is the uh, statewide ans coordinator and that is aquatic nuisance species, aquatic nuisance correct? species. correct mm-hmm. yeah. uh, so that's one thing we wanted to touch on today was the campaign don't dump your bait campaign and uh, right. um, and one thing that that we're really trying to stop the spread of is the asian carp and that uh, and that's easy to do when you're dumping your bait sometimes so we're going to talk about some of this and we got some pictures we'll roll through roll through today but tell us a little bit about the don't dump your bait campaign and what we're trying to accomplish there well in general uh we started a couple of years ago uh just coming from the bait dealers we know we got stickleback uh coming through the bait dealers that is well established now and also if if they're purchasing crayfish uh the red swamp has been spread around so just in that in the bait itself uh there could be invasive species and uh, now that we're targeting the Asian carp, and you can see this picture here, uh, how closely rese- the Asian carp resembles the gizzard shad. So which one's which? You tell me. I'm going to go with the uh, gizzard on top. Gizzard on top, yep. So that's a but gizzard shad. when you've shad got on. a bucket full of those, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do, exactly. right? Exactly. If you yeah. show the, the next picture, I think. Okay. Yeah, there's, that tells the story this right is, there. This is, you know, a typical uh, same net. Uh, our cast net and in, amongst all of the um, the gizzard shad and thread fringe shad there's small Asian carp and it's difficult if you don't know what you're looking for uh, the basic everyday fisherman would just think that's a minnow or right. or uh, a shad so. right for those listening the they are very 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 similar yeah yeah if you're listening and want to get a chance to see some of these pictures go to our YouTube channel or our TWRA TV and or even here on Facebook and watch this but yeah I'm looking at this picture and I'm seeing what I think might be some silvers in there, Asian carp, but it is really hard to tell. Yeah, when it's they all get together, they, they kind of blend in. Yeah. yeah. Um, and here's another picture while we're showing some shots. What are we, what are we looking at right this here? Was, uh, this was the Asian carp, or the silver carp, from Kentucky Lake back in, ni- in 2015 when we had the influx of small silver carp. And you can see the battery and see how small these are. Right. It's a double A battery we're comparing it to here. Yep. These were captured uh, around Murray. Murray State has got a, a biological station on uh, Kentucky Reservoir. And they they caught these, I think, like the first of August. Mm-hmm. And we went back and sampled, uh, I think, about two months later. And they went from, uh, looks like two and a half, three inches up to six to eight in wow. just a matter of a couple of months. So mm-hmm. That's the problem with the, the Asian carp is how quickly they grow. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, with the recent commission meeting, we, we, uh, there was proclamations that were presented, and, and we, uh, the commission voted uh, in favor of. And what we've got new uh, restrictions on bait transportation and, and how we can uh, transport bait on certain bodies of water and what we can and can't do. Can you elaborate on that? And then we'll, we'll talk about these new bait cards you got out. 
Yeah, the uh, <clears throat> the proclamation was uh, for Skipjack, Herring, Gizzard Shad, Threadfin Shad, uh, and I'll just read it, I guess, probably be the thing. Sure. Yeah. Um, these species may not be transported away from the water, alive from the Mississippi River, Barkley, Kentucky, Pickwick Reservoirs, and any tributaries or oxbows of those waters. Um, this restriction does not apply to the Duck River above Normandy Dam. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> the reason this was uh, enacted is because of this right here, these small Asian carp, we know that they're spawning in the Mississippi, probably the Ohio, uh, Illinois River, mm -hmm. and they're funneling down through the dams of Kentucky and Barkley. Uh, Kentucky Dam and Barkley uh, locks will open about 6,000 times mm. in a given year. Yeah. And in the spring, these things will be attracted to the high water flow, so they're just, you know, they're packed to the dams. They want to spawn, and when right. those gates open, here they come. And uh, So it takes a lot of water flow for them to spawn. Is that, is that correct? Takes more more on silver and Asian carp, or is that is that true? Uh, water flow helps it tremendously, I guess. It, it's flow, the rise of the water, okay. and also the rise of temperature. Okay. Uh, they spawn very similar to our striped bass. If they they need, I think they've determined now about 16 miles of flow. They're semi buoyant, so if if we don't have the flow, that egg will settle out, and uh, we. We are actually doing larval light uh, sampling in Kentucky Reservoir to see if we've got any spawning. We have not. This is our second year. That's good news. It's yeah, great news. news. So it's possible they could be spawning, but we're just not getting to that larval fingerling size in these reservoirs. They need that flow. Mm -hmm. And uh, since uh, we have in, in the past seen the small silver carp, then we're restricting them to these areas that we've seen them. Now, we've got crews out in Cheatham and Old Hickory that are looking for these small Asian carp, and if, if we spot them, then that regulation could go further. But right now, most of them are, are coming in, and they grow so quickly that they're getting up to 15, 18 inches or greater and then getting to Cheatham and Old Hickory. We're not seeing any small, which, okay. which is great. Uh -huh. um, so that could change if, if we start seeing small Asian carp and Cheatham and Old Hickory, and that, and I guess going into the, the ID card, this sure. is something new. This uh, was just put on our website this morning. You can actually um, take a picture with your phone, you know, and have it with you. Uh -huh. um, it's front yeah, and back here, right there. Yep. Yeah, here it is. Here, and our crew clerks are probably having these, and we'll get them out to uh, uh, across the state for people to get. But uh, we just wanted to. Uh, help the uh, angler to distinguish the the features sure and uh, we actually threw in the skipjack as well because they can they can mimic the the big head and the in the silver these are actually uh, live fish that we took pictures of okay and they're only two and a half three inches long so you can see how they they compare at a small size mm -hmm. and uh, we've got some uh, some reservoirs that don't have locks like Percy Priest Normandy so if they show up in those reservoirs, how did they get there? Yeah, yeah. Mm, we're going to know that somebody's been dumping. Yeah. Hey, tell us a little bit about what they eat. Uh, the, the big head and the silver are filter feeders, just like our paddle fish. Mm -hmm. uh, the big head uh, has um, uh, a wider uh, gill uh, filament, so they, they filter um, a little bit bigger food items than the uh, silver. But they both, what they're doing is taking out the, the uh, phytoplankton and the zooplankton, which is the bottom of the food chain. Right. And most of our game fish feed on that bottom of the food chain. Mm -hmm. So Out-competing them there. They're out-competing. They grow so fast that our game fish can't stay on top of them. And, and they found up in, I think it's Missouri River, Illinois River, they're, they're such high concentrations that they're actually seeing their game fish losing weight. And, um, and they'll actually move into embayments so thick that they drive the game fish out. So mm. if you got bass or crappie in there spawning and here comes a herd mm -hmm. of these Asian carp, they're going to pull off their nest. So right. it's not wow. just what they're eating, it's their presence. Uh -huh. um, and um, we're getting reports on Kentucky Lake of fish jumping, and everybody seems to think that that's Asian carp, but uh, 
the, the gizzard and threadfin will be in schools and you'll have, you know, a predator come up underneath them and, you know, I think everybody's seen them where they jump <laughs> right. that predators under there. So um, we've got a, a new uh, email. Okay, uh, yeah, that's on the on the bait card as well, right? Mm-hmm. And that's uh, ans.twra at tn.gov. And we're requesting anyone that has, that comes across an ANS species mm-hmm. to, uh, to let us know. It'd be great if we had a picture, but uh, if, if you're out on one of the reservoirs, especially the Cheetah Mode Hickory, and when you start going the, the upper Tennessee River, Chickamauga, mm-hmm. Watts Bar, if they see something small that resembles the Asian carp, take a picture of it and send it to this email, and we can identify it. But we're getting so many reports of, like I said, of those shad jumping. That everybody thinks it's a silver carp, and it's not. Right. So right. if you somebody could dip some out, take a picture, because uh, our crews, we, we have a rapid response um, initiative, and, and they're having to go out on all these uh-huh. sightings, and now it's, you know, it's, uh, it's gizzard chad or thread fin. So we want to kind of cut that down because it's taking up a lot of manpower to, you know, get a boat, go mm-hmm. out there, and get these people assigned. So if we can do it through an email with pictures. Um, That's a good thing. Everybody's got a phone in their pocket these days, and they can just snap a, a photo and email it to us. And and if you can't remember that other address, it's just go to our website, tnwildlife.org, and we'll mm-hmm. have that posted. Well, this, uh, this is on our website, so yep. it's down at right. the bottom as well. We'll make sure that's on the homepage, too, so people can... Can tune in there and find it easy. Before we run out of time, I want you to to, uh, to show these pictures real quick. These are uh, some aquarium fish. We also have people dumping their aquarium in, into the it. reservoirs, just like don't dump your bait, don't dump your uh, aquarium fish. Aquarium fish and your aquarium aquatic, uh, your plants and stuff too. Plant. The, this is a parrot feather in the upper reaches of Stones River, and yeah. it is a true aquarium fish. It's taken over the upper part of uh, Percy Creek. So, and also, if you catch bait fish, we ask that you uh, don't dump it back in the water, right? Don't dump it back in the water. Put it on the bank or something. Drain and your water on the on the shoreline and put your bait in the trash or, or take them home yep. and throw them in the backyard. Stop yeah. that spread. All right. Well, we thank you, David, for being on today. Thank you. And, um, and congratulations again. Yes. Thank you. Thank you Fisheries Don. Biologist of the That's Year. That's awesome. So that puts you, you in the running for... Uh, the whole Southeast Award, right? Uh, Is that true? I guess so. Maybe. I think he's in hey. contention. All right. We'll be voting for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for tuning in today, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you all next time on Tennessee Wildcast. And remember to follow us on Facebook, check out our website. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, and watch these videos on TWRE TV. So we'll see you all next time. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.